Hey there, early birds. We are not, uh, not officially started yet, but I'm using a new microphone uh, that, well, it's actually a microphone. I'm not just talking into the, uh, hold on, I need more light. Anyway, can you guys let me know if you can hear this? Actually, now don't, because I'm too close. All right, that's better. Anyway, somebody let me know if the sound is good. How you doing? How y'all doing? Words to your moms. I'm here to drop bombs. I got more rhymes than the Bible's got psalms. How's the sound? Besides the rapping, how does it sound? Okay, people can hear. Uh, I, I'm going to do the uh, hello food worshipers at uh, exactly 11 a.m. My time. Uh, we got the blue screen is back. Whoops. So uh, hopefully that hides all the mess in the background, most of it. All right. Um, well, I got to wait two minutes. We already have some great questions. I'm very excited. But uh, I can't officially get into them yet because all the peoples aren't have joined yet. Oh, that's some good grammar. Um, I feel like I need to sound more intelligent with the new mic. I, I, I think the bad laptop microphone covers up for lots of the lack of information. So anyway, this should be uh, this should be interesting. Uh, but yeah, every uh, chat maybe gets a little bit more technolo technologically advanced with you know the highly professional blue screens, microphones. Look at that! Looks like a real uh, looks like a real one, doesn't it? <laughs> By the way, the comments crack me up, even if I don't laugh out loud during the chat. Um, I always go back and look at them. To see if there's any you know recipe requests that I really need to do and missed, and I will actually read and just you know, literally laugh out loud. Oh my God, it's eleven o'clock. All right, let's do this. Hello, food wishers. Welcome to another live chat with Chef John. Uh, the topic today, I want everyone to relax. I know it said get out and vote edition, uh, but we're not doing any politics. I don't do politics on the channel. Not allowed to do politics on a channel. Don't want to do politics on a channel. But voting is not politics. Who you vote for is politics, of course. Uh, but voting is just your, you know, civic duty that everyone needs to do and participate in. So that's it. I was just going to throw it out there. I hope you all voted or are going to vote or have a plan to vote. Um, and I certainly don't need you need to tell you who to choose. Um, that's your business. Uh, even though it seems like a complete no-brainer. That's just my, you know personal opinion. Uh, but anyway, that concludes the get out the vote uh, portion of the program. And now we can get into food questions. Um, let me go to the top here because we have a new member, Technocore, uh, which I assume is a, he does high tech uh, Pleiades. That's my guess. Uh, has a couple of questions, actually just joined to ask these specific questions, which I'm going to get to in a second. Uh, although technically, Niwat Garden Girl had the first uh, comment. Oh, no, it, just, it wasn't a question. It was just a comment. Uh, she's making cooked spaghetti chicken on a snowy day in Colorado. Hopefully the snow extinguishes the fires. Yes, I hope for that as well. The fires around here are uh, apparently under control. Uh, the weather has been cooperating and nothing new or dangerous lately. So that's all good. So uh, fingers crossed and for my friends in Colorado. Um, now to techno cores question, and I'm glad he asked, cause I get a lot of grief about this. Um, when I do barbecue ribs, techno core asked one, you don't remove the membrane. Why? It's first thing on everyone else's says to do. Um, and then two, you don't put it on barbecue sauce and finish in the broiler a couple minutes per side. A uh, good, bad idea. Okay. The first thing's first. Um, I do not peel off the membrane almost ever, if ever. Um, I think I might have done one video where I just showed how to do that. But if you'll notice, whenever we prep ribs, I always try to slash, take a knife and cut through the membrane in a few spots. Well, not a few spots, like dozens of spots on the backside of the ribs. And then I'll 
do the old polka polka through the meat, through the membrane. And for me, that allows any of your dry rubs, wet rubs, marinades, whatever you're doing to penetrate that really tough membrane. Um, so I'm not exactly sure why people have to pull them off. I think in theory, it sounds like a beautiful idea. It's such a tough piece of whatever it is, connective tissue. Um, it makes sense to peel it off. But I've never been eating ribs where I didn't peel it off, which, like I said, is never. And I've done the poking part, the slashing part. I've never been eating ribs and thought, oh, this, this membrane is so tough. These ribs are great, but that membrane is ruining the experience. If you cook the ribs properly... Um, I'm not having any issues with membranes and you know what you paid whatever 10 bucks a pound for ribs. You paid 10 bucks a pound for that membrane. I want to eat the membrane. I paid for it. I want to eat it. So, uh, if you want to peel it off, go ahead. I think it does absolutely nothing to improve the experience. Again, you've cooked your ribs long enough. If you've undercooked the ribs, I can see the membrane being an extra thing to chew on, but that's just you you know, not cooking ribs right. Um, I think the peeling of the the membrane, uh, someone did it on TV, probably some famous chef on a show. And then everyone was like, oh my God, I didn't know we're supposed to do that. And then people are so afraid to not do everything the right way that they, you know, they stop uh, listening to common sense and they just have to start peeling rib, rib membranes. Um, don't forget a long time ago, everybody said, you got to put a little bit of olive oil in your pasta water when you boil it. Uh, so it doesn't, I don't know, boil over. Like there was some reason. Um, or, you know, so your pasta doesn't stick together. Total ridiculous. Totally ridiculous. Um, and then someone finally said, actually, you don't have to do that. And now people don't do that anymore. So um, anyway, I don't peel membrane. As far as putting barbecue sauce on and then throwing it under the broiler, I'm always up for that. Uh, ideally, you're doing it out on the grill and you're you know brushing it, getting it a little uh, caramelized over the fire. But yeah, broiler works great. A uh, couple minutes per side. Uh, I think that's a good idea. Why not? Um, and again, the same fundamentalists that will have you feeling terrible you didn't peel your membrane. Uh, they're the ones that say you don't even need a barbecue sauce if you did your ribs right. Uh, sorry, people. I like a little sauce with my meat. So uh, anyway, hopefully that answered. Uh, Technocore, you can now... Uh, Stop your membership. You got your two questions answered since you said that's the only reason you joined. Um, <laughs> I know you probably didn't mean it that way. But anyway, welcome aboard. Uh, let's make sure I didn't miss any of the first uh, few people here that got in early. People were waiting in line this morning to get in on the chat. It was very, very heartening. Uh, Bridget wants to know if you're going to eat an acorn squash or any squash, do you cu cut it first or cook it whole and... and I know it depends on what you're making. Yeah, generally, if you're going to do stuff with the inside, like stuff it or drizzle it with like, you know, maple butter and whatever, pecan bits, whatever you got going. Uh, generally, people cut them in half, scoop the seeds, and then proceed with the recipe. You can totally cook the whole squash if you want. That works. The seeds don't know the difference. If you want to cook the whole squash, wait till it gets tender, then cut it in half, then season it and do whatever you're going to do and finish the recipe. You can do that. It just seems um, like it's a little harder to work with in that soft condition. If you want nice, clean cuts and you want perfect, you know, acorn squash halves or or if you got a little butternuts, you want to do something with those. So generally we cut them, but absolutely you don't have to. Um, so, yeah, it does depend on the recipe. But generally I do cut them in half. Uh, very dangerous. Don't cut your fingers. But uh, that's the standard procedure. Uh Let's see here. Jim, do I have recipe for eggplant Parmesan? Do I ever? Uh, it's not a typical one. It's not your classic Italian eggplant Parmesan, whatever that means. Uh, I think I took just little pieces of eggplant and put some cheesy mixture in it and kind of folded it over like a little taco and then uh, lined those up in a, in a casserole dish and then baked it off with sauce and cheese and stuff. So uh, technically, yes, we do have a recipe for eggplant Parmesan. Um, I should do a proper one. Maybe it's a little late in the season now. But uh, anyway, one of these days, one of these days. All right. Uh, scrolling through, people say, sounds good. That must have been from before when I asked about the mic. Uh, thanks, Jace. JC. JC Adams. 
I sound legendary. I've always wanted to sound that way. Whoops. Sorry. All the messages just went by. I know. You never get tired of hearing that. Thank you for all the new members. Indulge Bespoke, Private Chefs, Inc. That's a long name, but I like it. What do you call a pumpkin that someone fell on? A squash. Thanks, Deep. Sing ha. Don't quit your day job. I'll do the jokes. Old man Muscle White's in the house. Hey, old man. Uh, Deep Singha says, my face pie made it to R backslash interesting as F. It's not F. It's the whole word. Interesting as F just saying. Love to see you be featured outside our Food Wish bubble. Yes. Now, um, not to sound old and oblivious, I'm not exactly sure what our backsplash interesting as food uh, is, but uh, apparently that's probably a good thing. Is that is that like a is that like TikTok? Is it anything like TikTok? Probably not. Uh, anyway, someone will explain that. Uh, Rebecca Nixon, who is I think again we've determined the gr the granddaughter of Richard Nixon, uh, made our spetzel for an Oktoberfest dinner. It was a hit once again. Very good. If you haven't made spetzel and you're in the mood for pasta, but not really, make some spetzel. It's really a uh, fun recipe to make. Ashley Smith would like to know, why does my roast chicken breast turn out so dense? Not dry, dense. Uh, Ashley, I'm not sure. I don't understand density with the chicken breast. Um, if they're undercooked, they're kind of smushy and... and and rubbery, and when they're fully cooked, they're definitely firm. Um, is that what you mean by dense? Uh, I do see you say you cook them to an internal temp of 165. That is way, way too much cooking for chicken breast. All right. Uh, anything that would like hurt you as far as like foodborne illness, and don't quote me on this because the legal department, um, they won't cover any of my, my lawsuits. But about 140 degrees for you know a few seconds will kill pretty much anything. Once you get up to 140, 145, you know it, there's such a insignificantly infantile, uh, tiny, tiny, tiny chance you'd get sick, if any, probably none. Once you get up to 150, forget about it. Everything's dead. So there is absolutely no reason to cook your chicken breast to 165. If you want some nice tender falling apart chicken thighs legs sure that makes sense but stop cooking your chicken breast that much stop it i mean we'll wean you off gently go to 150 to 155 next time see if that makes a difference they're not dense they're actually overcooked even if you don't think they're dry they are they're they need more moisture to give you that textural uh tenderness basically which is redundant uh tender is a texture but anyway you're cooking them too much. Uh, stop cooking them so much. You're not going to get sick. Don't worry. I, 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 this is left over from the olden times where everybody was afraid of dying from food and you know your grandparents' stories of the depression and it's all kind of trickled down and there's still cookbooks out there telling you to, to cook things to 165. I don't understand how that hasn't been overturned yet. Um, maybe the new administration will do something about that. Uh, Heather, yes. Talk of membranes on Halloween. Very good timing. Did you guys hear? Michelle's laughing through the door. Uh, we're going to eventually have her closer so you can hear her laugh. Uh, I like to know at least one person's laughing. Thanks, Shane. I'm. You're more adventurous because of me. That's the nicest thing you could ever say. Um, Heather has a Halloween joke for us. Uh, what do you call an Italian ghost? A fun ghoul, of course, a fun ghoul. Um, uh, tricking me into cursing in other languages, always appreciated. Uh, by the way, you the emojis you put, you're not supposed to laugh at your own joke. Come on, it was funny, but three crying of laughter faces might be a little much. Uh, anyway, thank you for that. Uh, do you store pecans or pecans at room temp or fridge? 
Uh, I will admit at this time I store my nuts at room temp because we go through them pretty quickly. So they're not turning rancid. Uh, if you were going to store them, you might as well go right for the freezer. If you're talking long-term, uh, unless you have like giant refrigerator space amounts that you are trying to fill up. Um, but yeah, the, the oily nuts definitely will last longer if they're cooler. Uh, but if you eat them and rotate them and work your way through them pretty quickly, I would say leave them wherever you want to leave them. Just not in a hot spot. Why would you put them in a hot spot? That'd be weird. David uh, Carbone made the banana pancakes and posted a pic. I think I saw those today on Twitter. By the way, if you don't follow me on Twitter, what are you doing? Uh, at Food Wishes, right there. That's where I actually will give my personal opinions on, you know, pop culture and the news of the day, shall we say. So uh, so anyway, uh, thank you for that. I always like seeing the pictures of the food you folks make uh, posted on social media, which Twitter is pretty much my social media. Uh, every once in a while, just to shock people, I'll do an Instagram. Uh, I have no idea what any of the other things are. Um, you know, like I said, TikTok. Am I supposed to be doing TikTok? That's videos, right? I already do those, so probably not. Uh, oh, uh, the interesting as F is a subreddit. I that's oh, okay. Thanks for explaining. Next thing to explain what's a subreddit, but we'll get there. Uh, Carmine, what about pork temp? Pork temp. Don't be afraid of pork temp. One like thirty five forty. I can do a pork tenderloin. I feel totally safe. Um, don't go past one fifty. Now, if you're doing a pulled pork shoulder, you got to get up to two hundred so it falls apart. So that depends. But again, once you get over a certain temp, all the little microorganisms are dead and they can't hurt you. So you got to relax and stop overcooking your meat. H. Uh, H. J. Cooper, thank you very much. Loving the spinach pasta. Good to hear. Hello, Ireland. Thank you, Nil Nil. Thank you very much. Uh, Bridget, you have a doppelganger. It's my ex-husband. Seriously, I'm going to send you a picture of him. You remind me of him. Very, very nice. We're still best friends. Uh, okay. Speaking of doppelgangers, did anyone see the Chef John breakdancing video on, um, on Twitter a few days ago? Uh, a few people posted it. Uh, Warren Patterson, I believe, uh, was the first person that posted it that I saw. Uh, I have a literally a clone out there same age unfortunately same hairdo same mustache although mine was a little grayer same exact body i mean the torso you're talking torsos torsos were exact match uh same khaki pants same same body language and this dude was break dancing i mean he must have been 55 this guy was break dancing like a 20 year old wishes they could and if you haven't seen that, go to my Twitter. I think I retweeted a couple of these videos. Um, that that was my doppelganger. In fact, I texted my sister Valerie. Uh, hey, Val. Texted my sister Valerie, and she actually thought it was me. One of the greatest compliments I've ever gotten. And she was texting it to family and friends saying, look at John. And then I felt terrible because you know she had to then text everyone saying, no, that was not my elderly uh, big brother trying to break dance. That was uh, an actual break dancer. Anyway, how did we get on that subject? Oh, yeah, a doppelganger. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm sorry for that your ex-husband looks like me, but I'm sure he has a nice personality. Uh, Jim wants to know, how do I buy my anchovies, jar or tin? I'm a jar guy. I like, I like, I like the little jar. Uh, mostly, I'm not afraid to admit, you get that little tiny free fork attached to the jar to fish them out. We have like 40 of those. Um, I don't, I'm not a hoarder, but I will keep an anchovy fork around for no apparent reason. Um, so I do like the jar. I just like to be able to see the anchovy. I have no problem with a tin. If you're making a big giant Caesar and the tin might be a little more affordable and you want to throw a whole tin in there, go for the tin. Just make sure, you know, quality company. Um, but I'm a jar guy. I like to see my fillets before I buy them. Yes, deep. You have to open a Twitter account now. What do you? What's what's taking you so long? 
Uh, Jamie wants to know, uh, Old Man Muscle White, should eggs be stored in the fridge? Back in the olden days, we stored them in the root cellar. Yes, Jamie, I've always wondered about this myself. Um, and again, I have just about the same amount of knowledge for these type of things as your average you know, jerk walking the street. Uh, when I first got to San Francisco, after having kept eggs in, our, in a refrigerator all my life, growing up, that's where my parents kept the eggs, as I think most of our parents did. And I get to San Francisco and culinary school again, all the eggs in the fridge. Never saw eggs anywhere other than a fridge. I get to San Francisco and I start this job at a French, uh, wasn't really a restaurant. It was more of a, a, a catering, charcuterie type operation. And they would just keep the case of eggs right on the counter. No refrigeration. And I would ask the chef about it. And he I, you know, swore at me in French, I called me something, I forget. Um, you know, ignorant American, some to that effect. Uh, apparently they thought keeping the eggs on the counter were much better. Uh, I think because room temperature eggs work better in recipes. That's why a lot of recipes, especially ones where you're doing a meringue or whatever, um, they'll always say, make sure the eggs are room temp. So I think because they were going through so many eggs and they're better to work with at room temp, they just left them out and it wasn't a problem. So I think you can leave them out. I don't think they go bad uh, in the course of a you know three, four days. But again, for longer storage, I would think a cooler temperature just makes sense. Uh, speaking of cool temperatures, I'm going to take a nice drink of cold, fresh water. Mm, that's good. But anyway, that's my opinion on eggs. I think you should probably keep them in the fridge just to play it safe. If you do leave them out, I don't think anything bad happens. Now, Jamie, you're saying root cellar. Generally, a root cellar, especially back in the olden days before global warming, the root cellar um, probably was pretty cold, probably like 50 degrees. So that's like not far away from off of a fridge. So uh, anyway, I think the same difference. Oh, Ashley, yes. Any suggestion for making an egg sunny side up without the goopy membrane on the top? Oh, the dreaded, well, I won't use the word. Um, yes, nobody likes that thing. One thing you can do, you can cover the pan with a, uh, a lid, pop a cover over your eggs and the top will kind of steam just ever so slightly. That usually takes care of it, but you can also overcook that way. So what I like to do is if you use enough butter, take a spoon and then that last 30 seconds of cooking, just spoon the hot butter over that egg wherever you see that thing situated. And that will kind of tighten it up a little bit. It won't, you know, make it go away, excuse me, but it will um, make it not so... What's the word I'm looking for? Snotty. That's the word I was trying not to say. Uh, so that's the only uh, tip I have for that. Otherwise, just drag it to the side of the plate like the rest of us and pretend it never happened. Yes, Marty, don't fall for Russian troll bots. That's the bad part about getting on Twitter. Uh, they can make even formerly intelligent people believe just the craziest things. Don't do it. Having said that, once I retire, I'm, I'm going to probably work as a 25% uh, Russian troll bot uh, wrangler. Hello from Switzerland. Hey, Susan. Uh, Steak Diane is in the house. I'm making Danish dough with the butter kind of broke up in pieces instead of being in a smooth layer. I think the butter was too cold, but everything else I've read emphasizes keeping everything cold. Yeah, butter should always be cold in a pastry. I think you're talking about, are you doing like a rough puff? I just watched British Baking Show last night, uh, or Friday night, rather, and uh, they're always doing rough puff on there. Uh, yeah, you can never go wrong with cold butter. Uh, if the butter's warm and you're working into a pastry, you end up with like brioche. It just, it just emulsifies into the dough. So yeah, you want you want chunks or you want firm butter, either in chunks worked into the dough or the classic method where you're doing the, the brick of butter that you're pounding into a thin, you know, rectangle and then laminating that with the, with the, with the actual dough. Yeah. Steak Dan is uh, reiterating eggs can be kept on the counter. They have a protective membrane. Uh, 
The theme of today's show, if you just joined us, is Live Chat with Chef John, Membrane Edition. We're talking rib membranes, egg membranes. Um, people, Some people are going to vote insane in the membranes. Um, but anyway, it's all about membranes today. If you have a membrane question, uh, please join and ask. It'll be totally, uh, it, it totally will be worth it. Uh, Grankle Flint, love the name. Thanks for the $1.99. Uh, message retracted. The very, I don't know what that Why you asked a question and then retracted it? How bad was it? Come on, what was that question? David lived in Iowa. They leave their eggs out. Well, there you go. Case closed. Uh, Deep Singh, Singh I want to know, how do I spike ground chicken with cilantro to and make it tasty? Yeah, just do that. Uh, just finely chop it. Why are you trying to puree cilantro? Is that how they do it? Or is that the sauce? Um, I'm confused. I would just chop up cilantro very fine, put it in your chicken, make a patty, eat a sandwich. They have those in Philly bodegas. Sounds good. I'm impressed, Philly. Way to go. Uh, now we thank you for spelling your name phonetically. Everyone needs to do that. Now we, uh, I place work, a place I worked, we'd keep eggs out during production, but store them in the walk in the end of the day. That is fairly standard procedure. Uh, old man muscle weight says you can get rid of that egg thingy by cracking the egg in a colander first. And I guess everything goes through except that. Yeah. But what if I want sunny side up? That suggestion was no help. Come on, old man. Are you talking about like scrambled eggs? Yes. If you're talking about scrambled eggs, that definitely will work. But I think the original question was sunny side. <coughs> Excuse me. Jim wants to know if you wanted big garlic blowout flavor, how would you prepare the garlic? Crushed, minced, or something else? Well, the smaller and finer you crush raw garlic, the stronger the flavor. This is a proven scientific fact, which is why an aioli, a real aioli, where it's just crushed garlic and some olive oil, maybe maybe, maybe not an egg yolk, um, that's why that's so intensely flavored. It's almost hot, all right? Um, but here's the problem. No matter how you prep your garlic, crush it, mince it, slice it, dice it, mash it, puree it, you name it. Once you cook it, it loses that harsh, hot, raw edge and becomes sweet and mild. That happens no matter how you cut the garlic. So it really depends. Um, the smaller, like I said, the smaller you cut it, the more flavor, the more surface area, the more uh, of those volatile flavoring, flavonoids and enzymes and oils and what are they? Uh, volatile oils. People love to talk about volatile oils. Um, those are all activated and that's where you get the strongness. So what you can do is layer it. You can put some garlic in at the beginning of a dish, cook it in, sweet, mild, uh, very, very non-aggressive. And then you can finish the dish with some stirred in, finely, finely minced or crushed garlic that just cooks briefly, if at all. Um, that's why I like dishes topped with a gremolata. So they cook, uh, for example, say you're doing some beef shanks. This is good beef shank weather. So let's say we cook some beef shanks with garlic in the braising liquid. And now they're beautiful and they're tender. And we have that nice, sweet, mellow garlic in the mix. Then we serve them and we take some raw garlic, really super finely minced garlic with parsley and lemon zest and maybe some you know crunchy breadcrumbs for some texture. And we mince all that together and we top our shanks with that. Now we got the best of both worlds. We have that sweet, mellow, beautiful garlic cooked in flavor. And then we got that contrast with the harsh, peppery, uh, in your face garlic tidbit at the end. So uh, that's my strategy. If you want really big, fresh, hot, blowout flavor, as Jim is ex expressing, uh, you have to add the garlic at the end or don't cook it at all. Uh, Rema, whoops, where'd Rema go? In the U.S., many countries, you need to refrigerate eggs. 
because they're washed bef before being sold. If you grow your own hens, you might be able to store at room temp, but better in the fridge. Okay. Steak Diana wasn't supposed to be rough puff, just puff. Well, then I think you have to use the traditional method of the layers. Um, but anyway, let us know how it turns out. Uh, Angie, can I use chicken feet for demi glaze instead of wings? I don't see why not. Those have you're after the gelatin, and those have a ton. So yes, that that will work. Um, I don't know if I'd use it exclusively, um, but I to be honest, I've never tried a pure chicken feet demi glaze. Um, would be interesting. Please report back. Carmine, do we really need Halloween after eight months of mask and eating candy? That's a good one. We got to keep our sense of humor. Uh, Deep's Bodega calls it spicy Indian chicken cheesesteak. That sounds like something I would eat. Just use chopped cilantro. You'll be fine. Ashley wants to know if I ever use a garlic press. Yes, I do. Um, I don't know. At some point, famous celebrity chefs started uh, <clears throat> making fun of garlic presses. Uh, I'm not sure why. Um, if I'm just going to smack, I want a couple of crushed cloves of garlic in something, I have no problem throwing them in a garlic press versus smashing them on a cutting board or dirtying my, uh, you know, my mortar and pestle. It, it all depends. Uh, the garlic doesn't know the difference is the point. If you crush it, you crush it. The garlic doesn't act any different if it's a press or a, the flat of a knife, um, really, for all practical purposes. Most people that claim that they can taste the differences in these things, like the rib membrane people, uh, they can't. They're just, uh, they've gone too far down the rabbit hole and they can never come back and admit, you know what, I should just, I should have just been eating those membranes. What was that? Why was I peeling that off? Um, having said that, if you have time and you peel it off, it's not going to hurt the rib, but. But I digress, literally. Uh, Jackie, which is better to use, whole canned tomatoes or crushed tomatoes? Ah, I don't know Is there is there, if there's a big difference. I think I would have to pick the whole can because I can do more things with those. And then the crushed, you're already, they're already crushed that much. Maybe I don't want them crushed that much. Maybe I want a few chunks. Who knows? Do I have to decide now? So if you have the whole can of tomatoes, it gives you more options. Plus, you can actually see how good they were. Um, not to be a cynic, but maybe in the tomato canning factory, uh, the boss is like, hey, put all the good ones, the good-looking ones in the cans for whole, and then all those weird-looking ones, we should probably just crush those and try to sell those to people too. So maybe I'm, maybe I've watched too many movies. Um, and I'm paranoid and delusional, but I'm thinking any fabricated processed product, the whole thing is always going to be better than the pieces of thing. Um, you know, think of going to the store and buying a nice beef and then grinding that yourself versus going and buying a package of ground meat. Who knows what went in there? They were like picking out the beef. That's my theory with processed food um if you can go for the whole stuff <clears throat> oh deep yeah I, I my cardi b drop in the double chicken tea has deep laughing yeah i should i should not have done that but anyway a few people were amused uh kin kinjun ranger I've never made fresh, real kimchi. I've done the, you know, uh, I've done the, uh, what's it called? Quick cheater hack where you just take some cabbage and radish and so forth and you just marinate it for a couple days and then you tell people it's kimchi. But I've never done the actual fermented where you have to bury the clay pot in your backyard um, because your wife won't let you keep it in the house because it stinks type of kimchi. I would like to try that one day, um, but it's not, I won't lie, it's not at the top of my list of to-dos, um, probably because there's so many amazing kimchi makers around here, 
in Northern California. Uh, so many amazing kimchi makers around here in Northern California. Um, I can't believe how many brands of kimchi are at the store. Like you go into a small grocery store and they have like the kinds of kimchi. So that really blew up over the last few years, which is a good thing. <clears throat> Lynn Ruff, hello. Made the burnt Basque cheesecake last night. Fantastic re burnt Basque cheesecake last night. Fantastic recipe. Thank you, Chef John. You're welcome. Thank you for the emojis. Still don't understand those, but thank you for using them. Um, the wooden spoon and the chef hat very much finished your point nicely. Um, if you post a picture of our burnt Basque, Basque cheesecake on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, please do me a favor. Be very clear to all your viewers that it's supposed to be burnt. Because what I end up doing every time post, someone posts a picture of that on, on social media, um, it, will, it will look perfect. Like that dark black brown, just gorgeous, perfectly cooked exterior. And then some person underneath will be like, nice burnt cheesecake, jerk. You know, way to burn the cheesecake. Learn how to cook. Well, what do you follow, Chef John? That guy's a hack. So then I have to get on there and explain that it's supposed to be that way, which, of course, no one would believe because that's what you would say if it was burnt and you were trying to defend someone. Um, so please explain up front when you post your picture, this is supposed to be burnt. It's a high temp cheesecake. For more information, please check out Food Wishes. All right. Thanks, Lacey, ma'am. Am I yelling? Is this too loud? I got the mic. I don't know what to do with the mic. I don't know how close to be. Is this too far away? It's all, uh, life is an experiment. So uh, let me know if I can improve any of this stuff. Uh, let's see. Lacey, ma Lacey mom, ma'am, ma'am. Let's go, ma'am. Uh, loved your Casey reference to Blue Koi in a recent video. Oh, I, I did steal a recipe from them. They do wonderful ginger chicken thighs and ants on a log. I've never heard of ants on a log. I got to go find them. Uh, go Chiefs. Yeah, go anyone except for the New York Giants. I mean, seriously. How? Why am I still watching? I know I said I was going to quit them, but I, you know what? Giants, I can't quit you. I tried. But anyway, um, go Chiefs. How's their record? I haven't looked at anyone else's record. Uh. Oh, my God. You know what? I forgot to put the Ethernet in. Holy cow. Can I put this in now? All right. Some tech person answer right now. If I plug the Ethernet wire, I totally forgot. Um, is it going to screw up the feed? I'm not going to plug this in. See, I got this thing. I'm not going to plug this in until someone tells me I can just go ahead and plug it in. I don't want to lose the feed. Please, tech people, help a brother out. Michelle, it's not funny. Stop laughing. I knew I was going to forget. I'm so excited by my All right. I mean, do it. What's the worst can happen? It's been a great If I lose you at this point, um, we're working with wires. Um, we're working with wires. Don't worry. My feet are in a bucket of water. Network, Thunder connected. All right, I think we're connected. Michelle's real. I got to turn Wi-Fi off. Okay, here. All right, Wi-Fi off. Nobody, nobody panic. I do not know how to get this feedback. Uh, anyway, thank you for joining us. I'm most likely going to lose. Oh, no. Please tell me. It looks like it's still going. Hello, I just said grape jello. If you heard grape jello, confirm. Grape jello. Anybody? Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Grape jello. <laughs> we have connection. All right. Anyway, woo, that was exciting. Logging. Hey, James, welcome aboard. Grape jello. People are loving it. Is that even a flavor? They're all the same flavor with food coloring, by the way. Jello is sugar flavored, I believe. Okay. All right. Now, no buffering issues. What do you guys want to talk about now that we've perfected all the technology? 
All right, who's got a real question? I'm going to drink some water until someone thinks one up. By the way, if you're not a member, all you got to do is hit the join button uh, under any video. Um, and when and if I come up with some great re reasons for you to do that, I will pass those along. In the meantime, just do it. We appreciate the support. Michelle and I here uh, trying to build a gentleman farmer ranch house farmstead uh, in Sonoma County. Um, I'm getting some calluses and uh, the, the skin's toughening up. Um, I'm able to work in the field up to 30 to 35 minutes at a time now. So uh, it's actually going pretty well. And if you want to join and share in on that adventure, uh, we do post occasional pictures and videos. I'll have a few more coming up soon. Um, and by the way, we're going to, I think, rework the entire membership program as far as what you get. Um, I'm tired of nobody reading the blog post anymore since I went from tens of thousands of readers on the Food Witch blog to like 50 people checking them out on the member uh, community board. But anyway, that's all, you know, administrative stuff. I'll I'll just wait and then give you the good news when it happens. But anyway, stay tuned for some announcements about that. All right, here we go. We got some new questions. Uh, Deep wants to know if I'd be open to a Zoom call with handpick fans members uh, and live stream it. Possibly. I don't know. How would I pick the members? I can't just pick all the, you know, all the funniest, smartest ones. I have to get, you know, some of the some of the lesser of the that in there too, to be fair. So uh, I don't know. We have to we have to talk about that. I'm not gonna say no. Uh, and yes, I am the George Jetson of my internet connection. That almost rhymed. Good try, silent cooking. All right. I'm just scrolling through. I, I have a lot of grape jello uh, polluting the feed here. I got to weed through all those. I don't know how that even came up. Uh, uh, have I grown, harvested, and then ground my own cayenne? I've done the first two. We've, gr we've grown and harvested. I think I posted a few cayenne picks for the members uh, recently or past. Uh, a couple months ago, maybe. We have not dried and ground any yet. We don't really have, um, I don't think we have the amount of product for that. Uh, next year, I will plant more than one cayenne plant. This year was just a very small vegetable garden, uh, just five or six little beds. We did like one of each thing, just a, more of an experiment and something to take some pictures of while we, uh, while we got this membership stuff rolling. But uh, yes, I would love to grow and grind and dry and then sprinkle on my own cayenne. You know, just a little shake, a little touch. Uh, Lynn, have I ever made or used satan? Satin, satan, satan? Uh, is that the fake uh, meat made out of gluten? Is that what that is? Uh, see, I miss Michelle Googling things and then whispering them and then laughing. Uh, we're, we have a different setup here. I'm in a workshop uh, and the door's closed. And uh, anyway... That's personal, personal issue. But uh, I think that's what Satan is. I have not. Uh, I've barely used it, having it made for me. Um, but I believe, if I'm not mistaken, isn't that what they use to make tofurkey, the fake turkeys <clears throat> out of tofu? Uh, or is that something else? I'm confused. <clears throat> Old Greg forgot to put ground pork on the shopping list this week. And won't have it for Swedish meatballs. Any suggestions on how to alter the recipe so my wife does won't notice and file for divorce? Um, well, first of all, you know I love to give relationship advice. If she's filing for divorce, filing for divorce after a bad batch of meatballs, it's really only a matter of time. Uh, so I have to, you know, pass that along to you. Um, you could just make them all with beef. Uh, you're going to need some more fat. So I don't know. Is your beef fatty? Then you're okay. If not, maybe sneak a little butter into the mix. Uh, maybe, do you have any bacon in the fridge? You probably have bacon in the fridge. Uh, that will give you a little bit of a smoky flavor, but you could definitely mince that up and use that as pork. Uh, but anyway, I can't help you out, and I hope, I hope you guys... Um, see a counselor and get through this. Michelle, you have to laugh louder. It's not coming through the door. 
I guess you could just open the door. Michelle, open the door. And watch. She'll open the door and I won't say anything funny. Uh, old man muscle white besides flapper pie, uh, would like some slow cooker recipes for beef. Uh, are you guys interested in slow cooker recipes? All right. They want to, they couldn't hear you with the door closed. Hello. Michelle just opened the door. She's going to laugh in an audible fashion now. <laughs> no, that was fake. They know the fake ones. All right. That was a real one. Um, let's see. Where's old man muscle white's question? Uh, yeah, let me know if you guys are interested in slow cooker recipes. I never think anyone's interested. Um, probably because I'm not that interested. I I just I'm you know I don't know why. I just put a, I'd rather put a Dutch oven on low and just let it sit there and walk by it and look at it once in a while. There's something about that plugged in thing that only has the one low setting. I feel like it's taking control. I'm a little I'm still a little insecure after all these years of cooking, and that I have to just you know, trust the the crock pot to be on the right low. That bothers me a little bit. Having said that, if you guys really, really want some slow cooker recipes, I can do a few. Um, so let me know. We can, we can do that. Uh, hey, I just had an idea. What about slow cooker flapper pie? Can you do that? Nothing, Michelle? All right. Uh, Diane wants... Whoops, where'd she go? Dan wants dandelion green salad and question mark beets, question mark. Um, when do you plant dandelion greens? Can I plant those now? Is that a cold weather green? I know dandelions grow anytime at, at, at all times in the yard. Um, but I'm going to be honest. I get very few requests for, Chef John, please do something with dandelion greens. So uh, maybe we'll have to work that in as a side dish with another recipe. Uh, Deep Sinha says there's a Bollywood movie called Kismat Connection with a K. Your Ethernet gaff reminded me of that. Well, first of all, I don't know if it was a gaff. Is it, I got to look up gaff. Could have been a gaff. But... Uh, Anyway, I will um, <clears throat> next time I'm out of movie ideas, <clears throat> I will try to uh, I will try to find Kismat Connection. And you know when they spell connection with a K, that's going to be a good, good movie, probably. Uh, Quinn Hell made our pork and tofu recipe recipe recipe, and I used a California Reaper chili and nearly burned my house down, but I couldn't stop eating it. Yes, I heard those are very hot. Uh, named after the you know angel of death. There's your first clue. But I think you mean I think you're talking about the minced pork and tofu uh, recipe. Yes, that's one of my favorites. I, why I don't know why she just laughed. Um, I think she's catching up on old comments. Um, yeah, I I like I like heat, but I don't like just extended periods of intense pain heat. I do like to get a good sweat going when I order, you know, Thai food, Indian food, and they say, you know, mild, medium, spicy, sometimes medium, sometimes spicy. It depends. But I don't like to actually be hurting myself when I'm eating. Um, I don't understand the show Hot Ones. Uh, once in a while, someone will email saying I should get on the show. I don't know how, how you do that anyway. But I believe the show is just about people eating things that are too hot. And then what happens? I'm not sure of the concept. Uh, Marty P. wants to know what food would pair well watching the new Borat film. I will not touch that. I will not touch any of that. Unlike Rudy Giuliani. hey -o. All right. I need a, I need a drum... Uh, uh, what was that? Rim shot drum sound effect. That's what I need for next chat. So about 50-50, some people are like, yeah, do the uh, do the slow cooker. We're into that. And other people are like, don't do that. Just use a Dutch oven. So now that's no help. Oh, Diane got a bunch of dandelions when she requested tarragon. 
Well, that's a weird substitution. Um, I would say try our beans and greens recipe and then chop up the dandelion greens and cook it in that. I think those would be beautiful with some braised greens or a bean ragu, as, a, as the foodies like to call it. <clears throat> Yes, wild salmon. Everyone buy wild salmon. Try not to buy the farm salmon if you can help it, unless it's one of those fancy farmed salmon that they say is, could be even better than the wild salmon. Anyway, do your own research. I have too many things to do. <clears throat> what about rappy? Rappy pie. I'm sure you love it. Yumbo. Slack, I've never heard of rappy pie. What is it? Someone tell me what rappy pie is. It is it is it is it a variation on flapper pie? Because that would be great. I could kill two two food wishes with one recipe. Uh, Deep has packaged peeled and cooked beets. Any idea what I can make with them? Uh, the best thing to do with beets today would be cut them in half or in quarters, wrap them in a in some parchment paper with. What are you laughing about? Anyway, I think drink it. Um, wrap them in parchment paper with some toasted walnuts, uh, a little rice vinegar, and then you roast that in the the, the beets absorb all that delicious walnuty flavor. Oh, walnut oil if you have some, drizzle some of that, uh, salt and pepper, and then when it comes out, tear open the package. Steam, big show, and then you crumble goat cheese over that, and that's one of the best meals ever. Roasted beets, cheese, and your, the dressing uh, of your choice. Ideally, has a little bit, like I said, walnut oil in there. So try that. Someone just spit out their beer. Do during these live chats? Um, Recipe requests, uh, Steak Dan, comfort food, it's festive desserts, impressive breakfast. Um, yeah, I always like to mix in a breakfast rest on the way. Oh, speaking of on the way, uh, we did the world's most trendy recipe right now is beef dip in something called a consomme, which is so not a consomme. It's actually a thinned out sauce, basically a chili sauce. Um, we're going to post that this week. Tuesday, I think Tuesday, yeah, Tuesday, will be the actual beef birria recipe, the beef stew part of it. And then the Friday video follow-up will be my version of the tacos. So stay tuned for that. Heads up, I did not do a really super traditional beef birria, which is much more of a uh, soup, like a brothy mixture. But here's my thinking. <clears throat> If I do the beef birria in a more of a thick and stew version, I can always thin that out and have what you're having, but it's much harder for you to start with the brothy version and then reduce it down to a nice thick sauce if you wanted. So uh, <clears throat> that's my strategy. Uh, Heather, the video is lagging again. That might be your connection. I am on the ethernet. I am just flying. This is like, I don't know the numbers. It's probably seven, 800 megabits, gigabytes per second. So um, I didn't know Ethernet buffers, too. I, uh, what I don't know about this stuff could fill a book. It's, there's so much to learn and to not learn and forget. Unplug the Ethernet cable. No, Enrico, I will not do that. People were just going to have to suffer through a little buffering. You got to want it, all right, people? You got to want it. <clears throat> so just hang tight. It's lagging. Would it help if I talk slower? Is that less uh, info going into the computer? Um, I'm not. Well, <clears throat> at least it's lagging at the end of the chat. We only have four and a half minutes left. If I missed any of your questions, please, please repost them now. And of course, requests. I'm seeing lots of good one. Dan Dan noodles. Um. Are those like Tom Tom noodles? I, I got to look that up. Uh, barbacoa, that's summer. I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, biryani, I, I've always wanted to do a biryani recipe. Uh, James has a bag of lamb bones. What do I do? What to do? 
lamb stock, I'm guessing. Lamb stock and then beans and lamb shanks braised in it. <clears throat> Still buffering. Well, I don't know what to do. It's probably California bandwidth, yes. Diverted to Southern California, I'm guessing. Um, but anyway, I got the Ethernet plugged in. You guys saw me, right? I'm doing everything I can do on my part. So now what? Where do I go from here? Ethernet's buffering. They told me it would not buffer if I stopped using the wireless. Um, less movement helps with the bandwidth and buffering. Less video change and processing. So don't move. Is that what you mean? I'm confused. All right, don't worry. I'll I'll learn all this eventually. Um, but we made it through most of the the chat. I, I'm happy with it. The background didn't fall down this time. Uh, Kinger says it's not buffering there. My caramel voice is coming through perfectly. James says. All right, here we go. Any last questions? <clears throat> Jamie, I appreciate you are relentless. One of these years, we're going to do a flapper pie. Um, even though I might call it, you know, custard pie or something to get more views. But you'll know. You'll know when you see it. It'll be flapper. And by the way, isn't a flapper, wasn't a flapper like a, a, some kind of name for females from the 20s? Am I getting that wrong? Was that a, a flapper? What was a flapper? I'm, I'm vaguely remembering um, what flappers were flapper it has to have some connection I'm going to do some research oh spacehead says you could just have the video be a portrait of you and just stream the audio that'd probably be a be idea be a good idea I'm guessing you meant um, does anyone want to see just a picture of me and then hear my voice and if we're going to do that why not just put a picture of you know George Clooney um, or just a pleasant, you know, scene like a seascape. Uh, anyway, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Is really this is making a buffer? If I, I like move, it can't handle it. I find that hard to believe. Maybe I just need a better connection. I got to ask the corporate overlords about this. <coughs> Thank you, David Carbone. They were dancers from the twenties. What I thought. They did the Charleston, I believe. See, it's all coming back to me. <clears throat> Rapid Pie is our, our, our Acadia dish, Acacia dish. I can't read this. Grated raw potatoes, drain water, replaced with chicken broth, paired with chicken, onions, baked for several hours. Several, several hours. Rapid Pie. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up rapid pie. I'm gonna look up flapper pie again, just to humor old man muscle white. Uh, what else am I do? What else am I making? Oh yeah, we maybe we'll do some slow cooker recipes. Maybe not. You never know. <clears throat> I'm not gonna call my ISP. Uh, also, what's an ISP? Oh, internet service provider. All right, maybe I'll call them. All right. Oh, Renee, thank you. You just made it. Thank you for joining. I'm sorry I yell every time someone joins. I get excited. Uh, Kinjun Rangard says it could be a few things. Yeah, no kidding. People said it was still fun, even though it buffered. Thank you for that. You're just being nice. It probably was super annoying. Yeah, they were jazz dancers. That's what I thought. Jazz dance the twenties, flapper pie named after them. Uh, thank you to all the new members. If I, again, if I missed your question, as usual, uh, my sincerest apologies. I really do try to read them all and uh, you know get to that get to all the good ones. So uh, and then as I sign off, trying to read, make sure I didn't miss any. Okay, we're done. Have a good rest of your Sunday. Uh, please do yourself and the country a favor and go vote. Uh, I don't care for who. Um, just exercise your right and make your voice be heard. Uh, unless you don't live in a swing state and it's going to be a landslide, then you know maybe don't even bother. Uh, just stay home. But anyway, no, don't do that. Go vote 
And uh, it's very important. I think that's what they're, that's what I hear. Um, I already mentioned the videos coming up, beef birria and birria tacos. Um, you didn't hear it from me, but I think I'm also going to try something called spaghetti donuts. So I will leave you with that. Do you want to see spaghetti donuts or not? Maybe I'll do a, a poll on the uh, community board or Twitter. This was a very trendy res uh, recipe three years ago, which is normally when I get around to them. But really good. And I'll do a recipe that's a gimmick if it looks really good. Not just because it's a gimmick. I never chase traffic like that. I should, but I don't. Um, but these look really interesting. So uh, I will leave you with the image of a spaghetti donut in your brain. Uh, have a great rest of your weekend. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Uh, stay safe. Don't go and stand in big giant crowds and scream and spit on each other. And if you are going to do that, wear a mask. It just makes sense. All right. If the no mask people are right, then a few people wore masks for no reason, no big deal. And if uh, and if the doctors are, are right, then maybe we save a few lives. So either way, either way, have a good one. Thank you. See you next time. And as always, enjoy. Going to end the stream now. Here we go. Are you sure you want to end the stream? Yeah.